going to stay with us. Now, on Wednesday, the tribunal upheld, upheld the victory of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. In the February 25th general elections, the tribunal led by Haruna Sami, or Samani, right, dismissed the petitions filed by Atiku Abubakar of the People's Democratic Party and Peter Obi of the Labour Party and allied uh, people's movement, APM, challenging Tinubu's victory. This comes after the chairman of the Independent National Electoral, uh, Electoral Commission, INEC Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, admitted that the commission experienced glitches in transmitting the election result through the IREF during the presidential election. He acknowledged this while giving a critique of the technological innovations deployed during the elections at a session with civil society organizations on the review of the 2023 general elections. Now, the INEC chairman said the accreditations of voters using the bimodal voter um, accreditation system, that's the Beavers, and the uploading of the results of the INEC, um, of the results of INEC the, um, viewing portal, that's the IREF, were successful, but the commission experienced glitches in transmitting the results to the IREF during the presidential election. In lieu of the tribunal's judgment, today we're analyzing the INEX, um, their job, right? They had just one job, right? Do you think that job, they, they had a pass mark? How did they do? Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation, send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 803 You can also tweet at us at Wayshaw, Afco, and the hashtag Wayshaw. So I want to bring in Kunle Lawal in one minute, but I just want to hear your thoughts. Do you think, how well did INEC do? Did they do well? I mean, based on what the tribunal said, that they were not mandated to transmit results. I'm kind of, like, confused in this matter. I really don't have much to say. You just keep quiet and let the experts teach me. Yeah, I think I'm just going to lean towards um, Kunle Lawal giving his expert um, view because, I mean, like um, you said, um, our next job in electoral process is not just one. Mm. It's many things. So if we're to rate them, are we just rating them based on the sure. results yeah. of their, the transmission or on all the other things? Yeah, I mean, all the, the exactly, the holistic thing. So mm. I think, yeah, that's the... All right. Kunle Lawal is no stranger to, to ways. He's an entrepreneur, idea generator, telex speaker, and patriot. He has a keen eye for opportunities based on his experience in politics, work, working with non-governmental organizations and the federal government of Nigeria. He is passionate about Nigeria and um, he is what we can term a detribalized Nigerian. And he's, uh, he con considers his boundaries to be limitless and is really focused on changing the Nigerian narrative in political participation and currently serves as the executive director of Electoral College um, Nigeria and is also the country um, lead for Ward Chat. All right, so Kunle, thank you so much for joining us this evening. This is an interesting conversation that, you know what, I told myself I cannot give myself a headache when I have Kunle Lawal in my corner. <laughs> But could yeah. I mean, so a lot of Nigerians, there's so many like talks here and there. And I love you for one thing. Most times when you have a conversation, you do not attach emotions to it. Because truly, we don't need emotions. We need facts. We need figures. We need someone that will be able to tell us exactly, you know, bring them, bring a bit of clarity. Yeah. Because we like to whip up emotions. We like to whip up sentiments and all of that when it comes to things like this. I, for one, I mean, I had a conversation when last week I said I wasn't expecting anything to come out from that election in terms of the way Nigerians, you know, because the, the Nigerian expectation was that they would say, okay, yes, and all of that. I wasn't, like, literally what played out was what I expected to play out. Mm. But tell me, um, if we want to give a scorecard to, first of all, the tribunal, right, did they do a good job? And secondly, INEC, because it seems like on one mouth, from you, you talked from two sides of your mouth, right? There was so much assurance and convictions and all of that that take your PVCs and go out. That you mean, I mean, I remember several times us having conversations around the exciting news around INEC, changing the policies and this real time transmission of results, all of those things, Kunle. 
tribunal don't come out say they were not mandated to do it. But Biko, I said like I said before, I don't want to do emotions. Tell me exactly what you think from your expert's view. And of course, from the data that you're privy to that we are not privy to. Did they do a good job as a tribunal? And also, did INEC, I mean, what's INEC's scorecard on the 2023 elections? Okay, so um, I'd like to hinge this conversation first on the beginning, or will we need to start with INEC? If we start with the tribunal, yeah. then we might miss some necessary things. So INEC, of course, as the arbitrary in elections in Nigeria, guarded by the Electoral Act. It is clear that INEC, on the case of INEC has um, pre-election, election, and post-election. The three parameters in which INEC operates. Pre-election will, of course, involve political parties. Um, clearly, um, the mechanisms which allow the political parties function, whether their conventions went well, as appointing the chairman, whatever. The Electoral Act stipulates that um, soft copies of, of party register and um, hard copies are submitted to INEC by 18 political parties. Did they meet this criteria? No, no party met this criteria. Do the people know? No. So before you start to ask of accountability of INEC, you actually should ask for an entire accountability of everyone. First, you cannot run a democracy in a politically illiterate country. It's going to be hard. We are so concerned about the product of our elections, nobody even cares about the process, mm -hmm. which is a big problem. So you've been having flaws in the foundations from the beginning, and then you want a great outcome. We seem to forget, on a basis of morality, what everybody is accusing INEC of is a basis of morality. Because INEC publicly came out with its, with Festus Okoye, its PR of saying the results are going to be transmitted live via IRA. Mm -hmm. But the law, the Electoral Act, and what, what, what gives INEC its powers also grants INEC a clear determinant on how it relays the information and collects the information it has. Mm. INEC is independent to that level. So as much as people say INEC is not independent, INEC actually is independent to that level. That is why INEC can stand and the courts can come out and say, if INEC chose this as the mode of transmission, then fine it is. In another country or in a sane democracy, what would have happened is that the INEC chairman and the PRO who were making statements, even uh, making the statements internationally, because I remember a conference in Chatham House mm -hmm. in which they, they engaged this conversation. So clearly, this they would have resigned because they had lied to the Nigerians. Yes. But by law, legally, INEC is empowered to transmit by any means necessary. It that chose, they choose. Yes, by law. So how would I put it? It's a case of, like I said, Legal morality, morality. Mm. not a legality case. Mm. Hmm. So INEC did not at any point trump any of Nigeria's rules. Now, heading up to the judgments, it is amazing. It's a 98-page judgment. And people blame people that, you know, were at the judgment and falling asleep. I watched the judgments. I can't I remember asleep. how many times I fell asleep while I watching watch. it. I fell asleep. <laughs> I, I, I tried to look at the 98 pages. Come on. Uh, Somebody was reading. Let me put it properly. It's now working for me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, so, but the key things to note. Mm. It is so amazing, and I'm sorry to say, that I think some senior advocates in Nigeria take a lot of money. Do not look at the electoral act and jump to go and prosecute. Mm. And this happened on all legal sides for all respondents. There was the case of um, Peter Obi by APC, clearly stating the legal uh, team of APC stating clearly that Peter Obi didn't have the rights to run for election under the Labour Party. Under the Labour Party, mm -hmm. pre-election matter. Mm -hmm. You all know that you can't bring a pre-election matter to that. Mm -hmm. Hold. The Electoral Act is clear, I think, in 25B, I'm not sure. So I think it's 25B. And it's clear that, as amended in 2022, now, not people in the same party, only people that participated in that primaries are culpable to sue people over those, those positions in a pre-election matter. 
So it indirectly states, in, as for Labour Party in, in general, Patutomi was the one that ran against um, Peter. If it wasn't Patutomi suing, according to the new laws, you cannot carry Peter B to court over a primary. Hmm. Mm. The same goes to oh. Shetima, Shetima, the vice goes, president. Yes, and it goes to yes, the vice all president. parties. Yes, mm. the vice president, 002, Kashim Shetima. Of course, His Excellency, the vice president, too, was accused on a, a double nomination. 22, uh, Electoral Act 2022, 25B still protects that. You did not run. You are not one of those that ran. You are not under you. his party. No, it's not even under his party. Mm. The act is clear. If you are not in that, that's you didn't contest. For the primaries. Does not a... contest in that election. Mm. Contest against in that particular primary. Yes, no. You don't carry. And that is to reduce the bulk and massive amount of cases we have. Because what you normally have preceding in Nigeria is multiple people going to court over... Mm -hmm. Cases that are not even in their party. Mm -hmm. That's why yeah. we still have it up. So to clear that, mm. let it be between if I run against Uwa in this case. Mm. It's me oh, and Uwa. It will not be that it is yes, in the party. Mm. Uh, no, we didn't actually the position you run. Okay, the position of the mm. vice president. Yeah. So, even if okay. I, so for example, if let's say I'm in the, the APC mm. and I have a discrepancy with the vi vice president's uh, so-called yeah. I cannot take him to court because I didn't run against him. But if I run against him, I can. Mm. Mm. Making it simpler and making it... But now, the, 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 the lawyers who handle this case, I mean, it's shocking. It's as if they didn't read the electoral act. Secondly, evidence placed before the court. It was shocking to read and shocking to realize that not one polling unit sheet was brought as evidence. Evidence being brought, no offense to media stations, were breaking news on stations and discussions like this where people will say, this, this, that, the election was rigged. You brought that. You brought that evidence to court. You say, now it's shocking you, all right? It's shocking me because I put no. Yes, because you should go through those ninety-eight pages. You will be very, very. Well, I thought they said they brought out papers only, and some of them were thrown out. Like literally, I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> now no, you're getting me caught. There was no evidence, uh. and it was clear that there was no evidence to, or take anything taken into evidence that resulted in a polling initiative. One of the things the, the, the tribunal kept talking about was the fact that the lawyers, the lawyers against, uh, or the, the, the lawyers putting a case against the sitting president did not provide, and they stated it. They said, you have, and they, the, 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 uh, it was not objected uh, to. Sa Samani was, Justice Samani was, was very clear on it. And he said, you have, political parties have people in polling units. You didn't bring me one polling unit sheet to mm. this, uh, that showed a discrepancy between this and this. Mm. You didn't. How, how do you want to push a case? But so would they have had access? Yes. 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 You have you you polling agent unit. You have polling agent. Well, is that not the property of INEC? No, 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 no. You sign off. So what happens is no, that everybody. When wait, you are going there, you know there wait, was a problem. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, wait. Wow, wow. Let's follow normal. I've been in the political party. I know what I'm telling I'm you. I'm telling you that you if sign it these is things. for that one, they were no they couldn't have been able to provide a lot of polling. No, in my has, for instance, the Labour has. Party did not have uh, what's it called? Representatives at the presidential elections. And who's for that? I don't know. That one is not conversation that we need to talk about. But you know what? Let's just go on. Just go out and come back. I will let Tijola ask you the question. But you know, stay with us. We'll be right back. Alright, thanks for staying with us. Now, if you just tuned in, we are discussing this tribunal's judgment and we are analyzing INEX job delivery. Do you think they did a fantastic job? Please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation, send us an SMS or WhatsApp to bridge one eight zero three eight four six six three. And we still have Kunle Lawa with us. Okay, Kiel, let me let Diola please come in because if I've got that conversation, we will not go we will not leave here today. <laughs> Okay, so I think I asked a question and he was just about to, you know, respond before we went on break. I was saying that, um, I mean, the, the sheets, like you mentioned, um, is, is it possible for the parties, you know, to have access to that? It's not, I felt like it was the property of INEC and as such, at the, at the conclusion of any election, you know, in the polling units, it becomes the property of INEC. So I, I'm not even aware 
that you know the parties you know that are contested can actually you know have access to that and no, present it as evidence oh okay so they, they have, have so they are like okay. they, are, they are like multiple copies of that thing okay so but the way i was going with mm. it is that because i went so i did not just vote in my polling unit i mm. went around polling units and mm. because i vote in magodo it's just a walking distance to different kinds of polling units and i know okay that for the presidential election Labour Party, I'm not talking about other parties for instance, Labour Party particularly, they would not have been able to provide those sheets because they did not have um, representatives in okay. most of those polling units. And the, the conversation was a lot of them, you know, had like, um, would I call them ghost workers mm. that didn't show up at the election day, which is conversation for another day in terms of the political drama that happened. Mm -hmm. But you see, when the governorship happened, they had corrected that because they now got volunteers and all of that to come and be their reps. Mm. What's the name now? They are polling mm. yeah, agents, okay, yeah. right? They, 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 were, they were not polling agents, you know, mm. at um, presidential per se. Okay. It was people doing videos, taking pictures, and all of those things, which is what you were saying that the tribunal is throwing out. No, so but I those are not. Mm -hmm. um, what's it called? Admittable evidence. Document. Yeah. In the court. Yeah. Get you. Mm. Because the electoral act is clear. Every party, if you are not ready, and I'm going to say this, it's not nice. And most people will say, "I'm ah, only supporting. I'm not supporting anybody. I'm following the law. I'm supporting the country." If you are not ready to run for president, don't. Mm. It's that simple. You have you have parties. I believe in fringe parties. I believe in. Yeah, of course, I believe in the whole system of democracy. But this is nine to eight thousand square kilometers over one hundred and seventy six thousand polling units and you're running for president if in a case or in eventuality you are caught up in a situation like this this is where these actions you know when politicians normally say structure most people think they're talking about money or mammoth crowds at a at a what they call it those campaigns mm -hmm. no that's not what they're talking about structure will tell you down to the world level. They can have so Mr. A here, here and they know them by the way. Yes, and they yeah. can get it across. That's what structure is mm. in politics. If that is not guaranteed, it will be hard to prove your case in a situation like this. And it's coming back to bite uh, the two parties, PDP and the Labour, Labour Party, Party mm. because of this inaction. I don't even want to mention APM because those ones, it's clear they probably didn't even have up to 100 polling units mm. across Nigeria, 100 polling agents across Nigeria. But that, the law demands you should have polling agents and they're ready to sign them. And I, I remember as of the time they signed, according to on paper at the presidential, the Labour Party had over 160,000. I think it's 160 or 150, I can't remember the number now, but about 150,000 that were signed. So where did they go? Those were approved. Where were they? Where you say that. <laughs> <laughs> but now that is that is mm. in, that is an intraparty problem, mm. not the. That's the, not the tribunal. The tribunal. Yeah. Mm. Not because you are supposed to have matched that. Yeah. That's not their business. It's you that they didn't come and. So are you trying to present. say that in all of this number of days that they've been in that tribunal, they did not present this one sixty thousand signed um, papers? Is that what you're saying? Clearly, yes. Okay, but well, let's let's focus on INEC job today. Mm. Okay. Right, mm. because truth be told, the tribunal can only give a verdict on what what is in front of them, and so I believe that for us to be able to find a solution, we have to go back. You mm. know, do you think, in terms of job delivery, after the promises of all of these things, you what, because what I hear you say now is almost I cannot hold INEC, because on one hand the law allows them to do whatever it is that they want to do, if. <coughs> No, well, if they choose to, to well, admit the reason, why would I correct something? <laughs> okay. You cannot hold INEC by the particular parameter you, you have are to setting, hold yes. INEC for, yes. but you can hold INEC on a multiple lot of other things. Mm. Okay. That's what I'm saying. So what are we holding them on? First, if, if let, let's go back to the beginning. Mm. INEC, present the soft copies of, of every 18 political parties, the membership list. Mm give us to the teeth, everybody. If INEC cannot produce it, that means every convention that was held and every primaries were illegal. Mm. Let's start from the beginning. It's law now. So I'm surprised nobody went there. Nobody went there. They decided to stick on Bivas and all that. There are many things now. 
There are many things. Well, it was, was there a situation in this election where it is clear within the Electoral Act, I think 95B, I can't remember. I, I skip up numbers a bit. So it's clear within the Electoral Act that no instrument of the state can support any political party. Did we not have a sitting minister serve as a campaign spokesman? Mm -hmm. It's an instrument of the state. Mm. That's already another infringement. So I, the critical question is, I don't know how to say this would, nicely. Would, what the hell were you thinking? It's not even that it's the sun that I'm even asking now. All these things really they talking is it not the work of a sun that's supposed to understand that these are where you can do punch holes, it's where you can put loophole because it just seemed like the whole because, how many days yeah. was just a waste, waste of everybody's time. Because you know what is annoying mm. to me, Kale? It's not even the fact, it's not the judgment in itself. It's the fact that every single thing that they brought, they just threw them out. So you mean that you didn't even have one thing, mm. you know, to hold on to say, okay, this one, okay, they, they infringed on this. It's impossible now because we saw some things that happened. People, people, people had... Um, what's it called? There, were, there was pockets of violence everywhere. Do you understand? So even if nothing, at least let us even have something that they say, okay, this one they admit to. This person was at I don't see anything like that. Here's, 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 here's the interesting part of that. So, um, let me give an example. Let's say Labour Party. Labour Party won um, Lagos, right? They also won Abuja. Mm. Most of the videos that came out with infringements were in Lagos. Oh, so I, I should bring out that infringement then throughout the Lagos that we won. Are you thinking of it? I am thinking what you're thinking, but I'm saying <laughs> to you that it's still enough to still bring it up. You understand? If you, have, if you don't, I don't think it will change the Let results. me explain. If you, if you, I don't need that right. But if you, if you, if you start to bring infringement, mm -hmm. and these are in the places you won, it yeah. doesn't really sound, it's like you're feeding the defense. Yeah. You're feeding the defense of yeah. the president. So I, I understand them choosing not to go that route. Mm. And, and what, what's most paramount that we need to look at is that for us to hold INEC accountable, we as citizens too cannot mortgage our responsibilities. Mm. We are held accountable. The Electoral Act is common information. Why, why isn't anybody saying anything? People used uh, government cars. To 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 um, to support candidates. Nobody said anything, which is totally flagrantly against the law. Some TV stations supported some particular candidates, totally against the law. Nobody spoke about that. You guys were all fine. So why are you fine when the end two is not good? Hmm. I don't understand how you want not to hold every part of the system accountable, but at the end you want to have the correct answer. Hmm. It doesn't work now. It doesn't work anywhere in the world. So if you want things to work and you want them to, you start from the beginning, follow the process step by step and find, hold the process accountable. If you are holding, if you held INEC, if, we, if let's say before the conventions, we held them and said, look, parties have not submitted this thing and every news media station in Nigeria was shouting. Everybody said, no, we're not going to elections except all the this parties sub yeah. submit the membership list. So we know who the delegates actually are game would have changed now. They will understand that some things will not be tolerated. And they understand that some people are reading the Electoral Act. But when you tolerated that, you held their convention, you laughed. Some people were crying at APC convention, people were laughing. Primaries came, people were bragging about dollars. Media houses carried how interesting it was that they were not even spending naira against dollars. That's what people were focusing on. Then at the end, you now try to accuse them. How will it work? That's, mm. <laughs> that's pretty interesting. Interesting. Yeah, interesting. interesting. Like, really so, interesting. I mean, with what you're saying now, Kuli, I'm really scared. Because it means that in the history of our country, we might never have a, a quality kind of um, electoral, electoral process. Because from what you're saying, is this, this infringement or whatever, They've been, it's been, it's been happening even right from before the, the elections, right? So, and because we are not aware of this, nobody's even questioning it. Nobody's even thinking of even questioning it. It, it means that forever and ever it will continue that way. And nobody will question it and people just be doing the, um, the wrongs, you know, well, the I wrong think, things. Well, I think the real problem mm. in Nigeria is that we've left what constitution and the law says and we've created a political culture totally different from all of this and then we've started that narrative and we live within that culture and it has become the way of life let's be honest we do not even follow the electoral act up to 20 percent because it has a stipulation on how much you can spend mm -hmm. now this is funny 
they tell you that the stipulation for, let's say, running for Senate, the, 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 benchmark. the benchmark is 200 million, mm -hmm. and yet you're selling forms 50 million. Is that not already 25% of, the, um, of mm -hmm. the amount? That's 25% of the limit, which means Oga will still pay delegates. So mm -hmm. That means most people before primaries have exceeded the total lim yeah. campaign limits of any political office, from presidency down to, uh, come on, in Lagos, you are selling local government chairman form for 2 million. And the limit on local government chairman is five million. You're already abusing the system for it began. Hmm. Okay, so who do we hold accountable to you. enforce the you. electoral process? You, the citizens. Because as long as you mortgage your own responsibilities or we do not know these laws, these things will continue to go on. And politicians know you don't know the law. Let me tell you, the average Nigerian, once it's political time, they feel money flows. That's what we all think. We, we have consciously allowed ourselves to allow this happen. So we can't now say we're absorbing ourselves from the situation we find ourselves in. Mm. You can't do that. So it's, 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 it's simple. We have chosen to act in a particular way, and we deserve the results that come from acting in that particular way. Hmm. Period. This is a down now. <laughs> hmm. I can say nice things. Do you see this is why I don't like a uh, Nigerian conversation? Right? No, Just but I mean, thing. they are hard you know, conversations. You know it's so saddening, mm -hmm. uh, saddening rather, mm -hmm. because as it stands now, how many of how many people will be privileged to hear? Maybe you could analyze the thing and teach us, you know, and all of that. I mean, but you see, that that's also, that understand? goes back to this. We really must read it. We, exactly. Ourselves. And mm -hmm. see, we can't afford to keep saying that, oh, I don't know, I didn't know. No, you make it your business to know. You see, it's as simple as that. We don't like the hard stuff. We want, it to, we want to wake up and suddenly see that Nigeria is good. It's not possible. Okay, you wanted to come in. Uh, so, uh, what, what I was saying, and just a follow-up to what you're saying, a lot of people think, okay, I, I always tell people, if you know what is going on on social media, mm -hmm. who, which uh, actor has divorced his wife, mm -hmm. who has tape, who does not have tape, that's the latest one. Um, <laughs> you are the number one in the So, who has, who has tape, who does not have tape? Who, what is going on here and what is not going mm -hmm. on here? If you know that, Ignorance of the law can yeah. never be justified. Because this information is available. It's not, the Electoral Act is not hidden. It's not something that senators put in their hand and are walking around it. It's common information spread everywhere. And, and for me, I also blame a few CSOs. And, here, and it's hard to say it, maybe because I'm in that space, but I always remind them that they should remember I'm part politician, part CSO. And um, we've also sold some wrong ideas. Mm. We've pushed people vote, 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 and totally ignored them participating in the party system. As long as people do not participate in a party system, what you're going to end up having is a selection and not an election. Yeah. Because you don't know how these candidates were picked for you. Do you know how somebody appeared? Somebody just come next in who I just say, ah, this is the candidate of APCO, this is the candidate of PDP. How did they appear? You don't okay. know. And you're not part of it. In any functional democracy, the citizens are so part of uh, what is going on that by the time they are done with primaries, you can as well see 20% of the people can vote. Anybody that enters is qualified enough to rule the country. And that's the way it's supposed to work. But we now turn the top on top of his head and start from the bottom, vote, vote, vote. Vote for who now? Why? Do you, okay, so averagely, if I ask everybody in, in um, Etiosa now where we are, and I say, okay, Banky was running for office. Why do you want to vote for Banky? People will say, ah, he's a musician. I know him. He's fine. His wife is fine. Really? That does that he's young. What are those, those parameters? He's supposed to go there and propose bills and work yeah. on things. Okay, you got in somebody. Ah, Labour Party, Labour Party. Labour Party won a TOSA legislatively. Knock, what knock. Knock, knock. Who's there? How many bills has that guy proposed? Mm. Zero. If I even propose it. There we are back to square one. So the choices that we make politically are totally ignorant. Mm. Nigeria's literacy level, according to the Electoral College, we're pushing it at 84%. And somebody was saying, one of my friends was saying, how can it be 84%? I said, it's from data. I said, how can it be 84%? And I was really pushed back. And I was like, look, we use data. To, it's like, Kule is supposed to be 98. <laughs> I was like, OK, sorry. <laughs> but that was. 
<laughs> yes, he's right. Yeah. Hmm. He's right because you don't know why you vote for House of Rep. You say vote for somebody who's yeah. young. I'll tell you something. If we're prior to 2023 elections, eh? And I'm very guilty. I'm, I'm not ashamed to admit it. Thank God for the people like Kule Lawa that helped me to, to see differently. Prior to 2023 elections, if I'm voting, Kule, it is the party that I vote in presidency that I will just go across all the other see. House of Senate. I literally, I'm, I'm, I kid you not. And I think that voting pattern it is well, weak. Yeah. Like that, what your guy said about 98%, it is true. Because even for governorship, who, whichever party I'm voting in governor is the same party that just goes across. And that's why you could see that it was a cheap win. But 2023 elections were quite different because people voted individuals. They voted people that they believed. You know, so you could, you, 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 you saw, it, like literally when they were counting votes at the different polling that I monitored, it was completely different results. The person who were in president, the person who were in the uh, Senate, you know, it was different, and, and but you know, there was a, I think there was a better uh, awareness, and you know, you know, as to what, why it was important to not just vote pa across party lines. And that is why I give the 2023 elections a little high score. Mm. For the first time in Nigerian history, we have eight parties in the National Assembly. Mm. We have five parties as governors. Mm. That, that has never happened in Nigeria's history. So I, it seems our politics is going somewhere. Now, what we need to change it's not the fact that these parties are now being voted for. All we need to change is the reason why you vote, vote for this issues. Issues. Yes. 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 Have we well done the election? Yes. So now it's good that we're seeing the mm -hmm. tilt mm. that you now know you can vote. I, I, I told you I spoke at an event sometime in 2002. No, 2020, 2022, about ending of 2021. And this was an elite crew in Etiosa. And the same thing you said. They didn't believe they could vote. They said, is the, would the vote still count if I vote APC here, PDP next? Mm -hmm. I was like, yes. They were like, no, no, no. They told them that. I said, who told you that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 oh, my God. Oh, fortunately, whatever we're having for, we are always yeah. running out of time. But oh, honestly, Kule, I believe that is better. I'm, I'm just, I'm just, like, literally, if we had one thing to do with INEC, what would you suggest? What should we do? Unbundle it. How? INEC has too many responsibilities. We have to push for the National Assembly to unbundle it. INEC, there are too many responsibilities vested in the chairman. If you want to really make INEC independent, the first thing you need to do is separate its arms differently. So those that um, announce election results are totally different and work in a separate place from those that are there with pre-election matters or those that are handling election materials. Mm -hmm. If you do that and you demand accountability from all and every system demands accountability, we could have something that actually works. And then I also don't believe that Nigeria is ready for a whole election in one, one day. day. Even the US, China, in their large democracies, they stagger their elections. We are nine to two eight thousand. We have four hundred thousand policemen. Two, half of them are guarding VIP. Meaning we have 200,000 policemen, meaning one policeman to 1,000 people. Mm. That's, that's impossible. So I believe we should stagger our elections, pick maybe one state from each uh, geopolitical zone this day, the next one this day, and you know, keep rotating it like that. We'll have more volunteers to participate mm. for INEC. Mm. We'll have, and I, I, this, yeah, you even have this more have people. You this, know, is what have pushed, yeah. this is what I've pushed forward for. And I believe 2023 elections beyond reasonable doubt has put that in my mind, and I would spend the next three years at least pushing for that particular part. I think it should happen like that, honestly, because imagine if we use the resources, even not let's say, not even say one state, let's even say Southwest. We just do elections around Southwest, bring in all the volunteers, do all the things, you understand? It's easier to monitor, it's easier to do a lot of things, then you move and deploy to another okay. region, and I think it will be better. Because honestly speaking, the burden is a lot. And Nigerians were not really fantastic document. We don't document things well. So, I mean, it's better we just stagger it. And I think we might find a solution. But thank you so much, Kunle Lawal. There's always pleasure. something pleasure. to learn. <laughs> always a pleasure. I don't take your, your presence for granted. He's my brother, by the way, but, you know. I don't take. I don't take. It's our brother. It's our brother. Mm. <laughs> don't, don't the way I've claimed you. The way I've claimed you. All right. Thank you so much, Kiel. Always a pleasure. Thank you, Diola. Now, before we go, I'm sure you follow us across all our social media handles at Wayshore Africa. You can interact with us further. 
Drop a comment and more importantly, follow all our engagements on social media, like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. If you missed our quote for today, which I believe I did not read, <laughs> here it is again. Before the elections, I called for third party verification of the INEX system so that we are sure that on election day, what is going to happen that day would not lead to a glitch. On election day, INEX said there was a glitch. Ah, this was from Osita Chidoke, the former Minister of Aviation and the chieftain of the PDSP, uh, P People's Democratic Party. We'll see you guys tomorrow. We have a couple of stories that are trending. Hope nothing hotter comes, but we have interesting <laughs> stories for you people. We'll see you on our ladies' night. Ciao.